Compression is quite a simple concept that we use every day in sound design, mixing, and generally anywhere where we work with audio. There's whole scores of compressors out there, many of which let you dial in an input and let you see what gain reductions kind of happening on something like an old school VU meter. Now you listen very carefully, you make sure you've got the right kind of vibe and you try to hear whether it's the right amount of compression happening or not. There is a case for emulating the sound of the 20th century, sure, but the art of being a ninja, going in, fixing the audio, improving it, and coming away with the listener having no suspicion that any effect has happened. The tool we're gonna to use today is Signum Audio's Sky Dynamics. Basically, it allows compression, expansion, and limiting all in one space without the introduction of harmonic distortion while giving us all of the details to get compression, expansion, and limiting happening. So let's have a quick breakdown of the GUI and have a look at all of the useful information that is available to us and how we can dial in compression Impression on a modern tool like this. In an unusual fashion, I'm gonna start at the bottom. See at the bottom here, we've got our sort of input and our signal processing chain. So we'd have a side chain, and here we've got these three circles. This indicates we're inputting a side chain into one of these individual processors or all three or any two of the combination, whatever we need. It's gonna be really useful because you can have the side chain affect the compressor, but the expander is completely left alone from the side chain. We can then enable, disable any combination of the three. And by selecting them, we can see the color change representing the parameters of that particular module. When the compressor is selected, we can see we've got this mint green. When we go to expand it, we can see everything change over to yellow. This represents some continuity throughout the whole thing. For example, now if we look at our input meter on the left hand side, it's now got a yellow bracket around the side of it. What this input meter is doing is telling us the process that's happening on that particular signal. If we go to compress, it's gone back to that mint green. If we go to limit, you can see it changed over to pink. That also corresponds with everything in the graph in the middle section here. Our expander is highlighted with the yellow points, our compressor is highlighted with the mint green, and our limiter is here at the top with the pink. And again, these things correspond to our readouts depending on what we have selected. So we've got our in readings, our gain reduction, and our out over here. And depending which one we've got selected, we'll change in the color. So at a glance, we always know exactly what we're looking at. So this graph is a representation of your peak signal. Very simply, from the bottom left corner to the top right corner is your input. So left completely linear like this will untouch the signal. There'll be no effect whatsoever. This is really useful because we can see exactly where we're peaking around and we can do things like bring our threshold down to here, set our ratio, and we can compress exactly at the range we want to. Same with our downward expander. We can see where it's dropping out for something like the breaths that occur just here. We can make use of the downward expander and its threshold to just dip those breaths out a little bit more. So let's have a look at setting up a precise compression on this vocal here. And I've chosen this section of the vocal because even if you look at the waveform, you can see what's happening. The performance starts out nice and strong. Uh, and in this first section, it maintains, we have a breath and then we're nice and strong here. And then we kind of fade away. Look, we can see we're just losing our energy. Have a little rest, get a breath in nice and strong. And again, we can see it fade away there towards the end. And as a result, when we take the effects off, we start to lose the vocal. Some bits come through and a beautiful and nice clarity that's balanced, but we lose the wording around here. Now we can still hear them, they can be made out, but it just kind of, you have to really focus on it. It's not sitting there with the rest of the vocal. So that's what we'd use here. Now we've also got those breaths and we can look at using our downward expansion to help control those and dip out the areas where we don't want that <gasps> coming in instead of having to cut them all out. So let's have a look at how we would dial that in. So when we play the audio, we can see exactly where our peak is and the areas that we maybe want to control so that we can then lift up those quieter sections. You see that happening just around here. Now we know this is a loud section and we know this is too. And we can see it dip off here. So we know we can bring our threshold right to here and that's gonna be what we need. Now we can take the control from up here and we can apply quite a stiff ratio there, like four over five potentially. So the second it crosses that threshold, 
we're going to start compressing it to uh, 4 over 5. To 4.5 over 1. Now because it's a vocal, I'd want to have the attack be a little bit slower. So we're just going to pump that up to somewhere in the 20s. And now looking at our meter, you know, the stars, no moon sections here. And then when it gets sort of below here, we're going to want our downward expander to kick in. So we're going to put that in there and just give that a ratio to fade that off. We can be quite ruthless with that. Maybe even bring it up a bit. That's helping us control those breaths as well now. So yeah, technically we're going to be compressing this vocal by 12 decibels, which seems a huge amount, but it's only for a very brief key moment. And we've narrowed it down to this really small band here. Now, if we want to work a bit more accurately on here, we can use this little hand icon and we can actually just drag in and we can now see it in even more detail. Now we certainly don't want to be adding 12 dB back, but we can use our gain over here to add a little bit back in. Now realistically, we're probably going to want to add something like a 6 dB, which is around half of the maximum, but about the average that we're reducing by. And that's going to help lift up the quieter sections by around 6 decibels, while quieting down the loudest peak by nearly 12 reducing that dynamic range overall, but really precisely, and helping us sit that vocal on top of the mix overall. Let's A and B them and see how that's worked for us. Now all moments in that vocal uh, sticking out and sitting nice on top of that mix. There you go guys, that's basically my case for having a modern, clean, transparent compressor in your mixing arsenal because I was able to do that lift and that adjustment and that expansion without really having to add any gain and get that vocal to sit right on top and it does it to a point you can't hear it working. You don't hear the compression, you just hear the improvement to the audio. I hope it's been helpful for you guys and I look really forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.